everybody. Well, I just want to start by saying thank you very much for joining us tonight on a busy schedule. Uh, I know how valuable everybody's time is. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to take you through our presentation tonight and I hope you find some value out of it and take something away uh, from what we're doing tonight. And uh, I am so super excited to be here. All right. So welcome to whiteboard.chat. All right. Thank you for taking time out of your busy. Sorry, Mnan, uh, I muted everybody and I think I muted you accidentally too. Can you un unmute, please? Can you hear me now, everybody? Yep. Great, fantastic. All right, everybody. So um, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, welcome everybody from all over the world. Um, Below you will see an outline of how we'll spend our hour together. We'll also stay after hour after the hour to answer any questions that you may have, right? And so we're going to start the hour with an authentic simulated lesson in whiteboard.chat. And then I'm going to show you how we introduce to whiteboard.chat to students, to teachers, right? And then we're going to go through the process of how to invite students to whiteboard.chat. And then in between, you know, anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes, uh, my colleague, um, moderator, Sid, will stop for questions or, you know, I might just stop for questions, all right? I do want to say special thanks to Mr. Pawan, Mr. Deval, Mr. Praveen, Mr. Sid. They are the pioneers in whiteboard.chat. They created this platform for our teachers around the world. Um, and I can't say enough about them, but if I keep talking about them, our hours will be up. So thank you to them. I also want to thank Mr. James McEachin, who is uh, the Department Head of Technology for New Providence School District. His knowledge, um, his kindness, and his willingness to help students, teachers, parents, um, everybody alike. And he has taught me everything, so I owe him uh, everything that I know I owe to J Mr. Jim McEachin. And I also want to say, I want to thank the teachers who have dedicated their time and energy to help make whiteboard.chat better every day. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Pawan, but we're up to 1 million users. Am I correct when I say that? In six months, right? That's, that's right. 1 million, 1 million users in six months, and this platform is free. All right, so this is for you to use if you, I, and, and it's so dynamic, especially in the hybrid environment. So let's get started with our first lesson. All right, we're gonna go into an authentic simulated lesson right now. All right, and so give me a second. I'm gonna bring the lesson over. And uh, here we go. Here's the lesson. All right, can everybody see that lesson? Yes? Thumbs up, thumbs down over here. Yes, great, fantastic. So what you're seeing right now is the teacher board, all right? And so the most important thing here is that you do not share your, this link up here, okay, with any student. That's the teacher link, right? It's so important not to do that, right? Um, so let me remind you that all of my lessons are created on a desktop or a PC. It's highly recommended that we do that on a high, uh, laptop or a PC because the, you have more functionalities and it's more user-friendly than a tablet, right? So as you can see, all this was created on a, on a PC. The first thing I'm gonna show you is how to invite your students to whiteboard.chat. So where I come from, we are a one-to-one -one iPad district and we are a Google platform, right? So over here, you'll see invite in this corner. I always think of it as like I'm always inviting somebody into my room. So that's how you know that you're inviting the kids, right? So I'll go ahead and I will invite and I will go ahead and I will use this URL, okay? That's what about probably 95% of the teachers use for whiteboard.chat, all right? And then I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna go into Google Classroom. 
And then as you can see, I made a fake whiteboard.chat classroom, right? And in the classwork, all right, I will be creating a class and I'm gonna create an assignment and you can create an assignment or you can create a material, either one. And I'll explain why in a few minutes, I prefer to make an assignment and we're gonna call it setting goals. And just while I'm typing this in, just to let you know, I ha this has been uh, done in a class before, right? So it's pretty cool. The kids really love it. You're gonna go to link, all right? And then you're just gonna paste the link in there. And then you're gonna add the link. And there you go, right? And then you're just gonna assign it. I just wanna make sure I assign it to the right students. And I'm gonna click assign. And the assignment is set. There's another way to go ahead. And um, if you are not a Google uh, district and you're using Microsoft Teams, Schoology, you're using some kind of different platform, totally all right. Let me show you how to do that, right? Um, so what you do is you go ahead and copy the link. You go up here to another tab, and then you can actually just email them the link, right? And just email them the link. Now, once they get the link, once they get the link, right? And they click on the link, every child will get their own board. Like in Google Classroom, you have to make an assignment and then you have to click on, hey, um, create every child a, a their own assignment. You don't have to do that with whiteboard.chat. So they can just click on the link and it'll be on their board. Okay, great. Uh, you know what we're going to do right now? As you can see up here, um, we're on slide one. I'm in the teacher's view right now, right? Down here is the grid view. All right, grid view down below. If I go into the grid view, I can see all my kids, right? Right now I see Mr. McGeechin, I see Mr. Pawan, right? And this is my board, right? And so there's a couple of ways you can do this, right? You can do teacher-led or student-led. I'm gonna show you teacher-led first, right? So as you can see, maybe you don't want the kids going ahead Maybe it's something important that you just want to go through and you know you want to explain to them. So what you'll do is you'll go to your avatar and right here, you'll have something that says, follow the teacher. When you say follow the teacher, it'll show up on the right-hand corner up here, okay? And from there, right, I'm gonna, if I go to slide two, all the kids will be on slide two automatically. They have no control. I have all the control. If I go to slide three, all the kids go to slide three. That's slide two. Here's slide three. Mr. McEachin and Mr. Pawan, are you on slide three right now? As you can see, Mr. McEachin is holding up his iPad. They have no control over it. Sometimes something might go blank, but you know, your best friend is the refresh button. Let me show you the refresh button, which is up here. When something goes wrong, 89 to 98% of the times, you can press refresh and it just comes back. It's like magic, tremendous, right? Um, so don't panic when something goes blank. It does happen sometimes, right? All right, so now I'm on slide four, right? And so the cool thing in uh, whiteboard.chat is that you can put YouTube videos, right? into whiteboard.chat using the tools and then using um, the YouTube link. And so here's the cool thing, guys, right? The cool thing is it takes all the ads out of it, right? You don't have to worry about the ads. You can actually, right, start it at a certain time and end it at a certain time. You know that seven to 10 minute video that you don't want to show? You only want to show like 42 seconds of it? <laughs> That's all I want to show. Um, although I want to bring your attention to that it is in seconds. Okay, so make sure you put it in seconds. Fantastic. All right, so that's all I'm going to show you for now because I'm going to show you the other way 
that we're going to do this, right? So that is teacher led. In order to unlock teacher led, okay, all you do is go to this lock right here, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the grid view and I'm going to let Mr. Pawan and Mr. McEachin go ahead and work on some of their assignments in setting goals, okay? And there you go, the refresh button. No, no I think um, on page page we, two of the grid view, you can just go back one page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you are, if you have more than 20 students, can you go to page number one on the grid? No, yep. you were fine. Uh, yep. so. We're good here? No, okay, here just we go. hit grid view one more time. Okay. Did I hit it too many times? And you did page and then hit the left page number. So go to page number one. Okay. And then you will see all the students. Uh, this is why I have the developers here to help me out. See? Now, somebody was saying earlier, I tried to start it and I didn't um, know how to do it. Right. And so my answer to that person was, you know what? Everybody needs help. Everybody needs help and it's totally okay. Right. And as you can see, right, Mr. Pawan is putting in his answers. I can actually go ahead and go in there and join his class. And when I join his class, it's just me and him. Nobody else can see it. So I can go in there and just give personalized instruction, right? Okay. So, um, so let's go ahead, you guys, Mr. Pawan and Mr. McEachin. You guys go ahead and you guys um, do the um, assignment. And as you can see, right, this is live. Whether they're at home or whether they're in school, you can see what they're doing live, right? Live, right? Mr. Pawan, you guys can go ahead and um, do the answer as you can see so that you guys can see a little bit better. I'm gonna put a row of two in here so that you can see how live this is, right? I know Mr. McEachin is in New Jersey. I know Mr. Pawan is in uh, California, right? Right? And I can see that they're working hard right now, right? And they're watching a video. And can we stop right here for a second, please, Mr. McEachin and Mr. Pawan? So I just want to show uh, the audience out here what I did. Okay. So I'm going to jump into Mr. Pawan's board right here. Right. And all right. And you can see this piece right here. This is not part of whiteboard.chat. All right. I'm going to cancel that. So every time I introduce a new feature to a student, I give them some kind of direction to where to start. So let me go back in order to go back to your book or your lesson plan, you go back to my book, right? So every time, so the question says use three post-it notes to explain how failure can help you succeed, right? But my students have never seen this feature before. Every time I introduce a new feature, I give them a way to get to that feature. It's like a roadmap that I give them. So I give them the tools bar, then I give them the note. So what I would tell them to do is I'll go, they'll go over to the toolbar and then they'll find the note and then they'll find the sticky pad and they can pick uh, any color they want. And then they can just move it around and they need to use three post, three different post-its, right? Now, I know it's a lot, but there's always things that I add to their plate. And we're gonna talk about how I teach it to teachers and how I teach it to students. And um, then you'll like probably put it together. But right now, this is just an authentic lesson, okay? Um, let's stop here for a second, Mr. Uh, Sid. Is there any questions by chance? No, you have them completely engaged. Uh, no questions. I love it. Fantastic. It's either I'm being engaged or I'm being very boring, you know? 
So I hope it's the first one. Oh, I see a smile. That's great. I see another smile. That's even better. Love it. All right, here we go. So I'm going to go back to the grid view. And as you guys can remember, the grid view is to watch the students work live, right? Look at this. All right. Can we stop for a second, Mr. McGeech and Mr. Pawan? Look at Mr. Pawan. He did a fantastic job, right? I have 20 students and I want to showcase Mr. Pawan's work. And I want to explain to the students, this is how you should do it. This is what I'm looking for. So if you take a look down here, right? It says showcase, right? I can showcase his work, right? Should be showcasing right now, right, Mr. Pawan? Right, here's Mr. Pawan's work. As you can see, there's no name on it. I will never embarrass a student. Right. And I can say, wow, look at Mr. Pawan's work. Right. This goes to the whole class. It stops everything in their tracks. Maybe they're not getting it. I need something to introduce the class in an instant so they can connect. Right. So I do the showcase. I said, look at his answers. Right. And so I showcase it and I explain it for about 32 seconds. And then I come up here to the X button and I stop it. Now everybody's back to their board. Fantastic, right? You can showcase multiple, okay, assignments. One child might do it this way. One child might do it a different way. And now you have personalized learning as well as differentiated instruction. You know what I mean? Does that make sense so far, right? All right, so let's go ahead, Mr. Pawan and Mr. McGeechan. Uh, you guys go ahead and keep continue on working and I'm going to stop you guys and explain what we're doing in the meantime. All right. So uh, once again, I'm going to go to the grid. And I'm going to see what they're doing. Now that they're using their smart goals to reach their goals. To reach their goals. Right. Keep going, guys. You guys are doing fantastic by the end of the Ah, stop here, please. Uh, look at Mr. McGeechan. He's outlining things that he needs to remember. Right? And you don't need to save everything. Whiteboard.chat does that for you. You don't have to ever worry about that. Right? All right. So I want to explain something that was really real and really authentic in my class. So... If you can stop for a second here, Mr. Pawan, right? In my class, right, I had a question here. Think of a goal that you would like to accomplish. It could be a long or short-term goal. Use the SMART goal acronym to plan out how you would like to accomplish this goal. I had 20 students in class. 85% of them did not get the answer right or was putting down the wrong answer. What does that tell me? That tells me that I did something wrong. If there were two students that didn't get it, I would jump into the board and help them. But if 85% of them did not get it, that tells me I need to clarify the instruction. So I stop the students. How do I stop the students, right? What I do, oh, look at this. This is fantastic. Do you see this right here? There's a question mark with Mr. McEachin's name on it. He went to the hand, he went to the hand signal on his um, whiteboard.chat. And on that hand, guys, right? On that hand, there is, I need help or I am finished, right? You know that child that say, hey, Mr. No. That's my last name, by the way. No, I'm sorry. It's really no, right? So you raise your hand and they're like, I'm done, I'm done. I'm no longer needed, right? They can just say, I'm finished. You get a notification, they're done. But I know that this question mark is Mr. James, James McEachin, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Mr. James McEachin. It takes me to his board. This is his board. This is where he has a question with. And I'm going to type in, how, how can I help? Question mark. He sees that, 
He gets that. This is live. This is personalized learning at its best. It stops him in his tracks from learning the wrong way, especially in special ed, right? One of the top two things is hard for special ed students to break that mindset, right? And so he says, writes back to me live, whether he's at home, whether he's in the classroom, whether he's on the beach having a drink, I can see it, right? He has a question mark over here. What do I do to start with? And then I can go ahead and answer him. Now I know that 85% of the students, right, did not understand what I was asking for. My fault. Teachers make mistakes all the time, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, right? I'm going to go up to my avatar, which is right here. I might go ahead and lock the class, right? Lock the class. That means nobody can move. They're done. Whatever they're on, they're done, right? And I might just go back to my lesson plan, right? I'm still, I'm... And now this is very important here. You see how I'm not in my lesson plan because I see these two avatars, right? If you just see two avatars, that means you're in somebody else's board. Your goal is to see multiple avatars. So I'm going to go back to the instructor board. Now you see the multiple instructor, multiple avatars up there. I know for a fact that I'm in my instructor board and I'm just not writing to one student, right? So I know Mr. McEachin has some questions. I know Mr. Pawan has some questions, right? How do I know that? Because I was in the grid view looking at all their answers, right? Looking at all their answers. So here's what I did for all my students. Was this because I locked the class? So here were the two questions that I had. Let's focus on this real quick. These were the only two questions I had because I thought the last slide was enough for them to connect, right? So I stopped the class. I said all that. So I stopped the class. So I stopped the class and inserted a video on this slide and then added another slide to explain. Finally, I showcase work from a few students who help them better understand the assignment. Now, this was during the class. This is live. This is me interjecting into their board and giving them an opportunity to understand instead of them sending me 100 emails at night and wasting time or coming to me the next morning. I didn't understand. I didn't understand. Or maybe, you know, you have students at home in a C group that are totally not with the class. So now I interjected a video. Then I went ahead and I created a new board or a new slide for them so that they have a kind of a template, right? A template, SMART goals, okay, acronym to get your goals, S-M-A-R-T. Not only did I do that, right? I also gave them an opportunity, okay, to see somebody else's work by showcasing it to them, by showcasing it to them, right? Not just one, all right? Maybe they didn't get it with one, right? I showed another one, but here's where I differentiate and I'm like, well, it looks like you work backwards and I'm not here to embarrass the child when I'm showcasing, but you got here, you got here, you got here, you got here, you got here. I love how you did that. Now, since you work backwards, let's come up with your goal, right? That's working backwards by design, UBD, from what I understand. Mr. McGeechan, is that right by chance? I don't know. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Great. All right. So now we have different 
showcasings, different videos, so many different ways to, for students to engage, right? And another way is, if you're not sure, I'm there, raise your digital hand. Mr. McEachin, can you raise your digital hand again, please? One more time. All right, let me get this out here for you real quick. All right, give me a second. I apologize and I'm coming in here. And as you can see, oh, that's something else. That was gonna be my surprise for you guys later. <laughs> All right, 5.30, all right? So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna get Mr. McGeechan to white, raise his hand in whiteboard.chat, right? And we're gonna- None, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I'm just seeing your blank desktop right now. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm getting okay. it in there right now. Can you see that, that now? Yeah. Yes? All right, so we're gonna go back to here. I kind of deleted that by accident, so I apologize. And if you delete something by accident, it's totally okay because it's always there, right? And so I'm gonna go up here with my folder and then they're setting goals. And the most important thing, folks, so important, it took me an hour and a half to figure this out. In order to open a file, you have to hit the eyeball. If you hit anything else, nothing will open. Took me an hour and a half of my time. But now I'm gonna share that secret with you. There you go. <laughs> Get that. Yeah, we're there. All right. Now we're gonna unlock the board. I see Mr. McGeechan has a question. I'm gonna to go to his board by answering his question. And there you go. It takes me right to his board. And there he is again. And I can talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. I, I, uh, I don't right. understand what majority means. Majority means a, a, a good amount of them. Okay, a good amount, a lot, a majority, right? Fantastic question, Mr. McEachin. Mr. Pawan, would you have any more questions? I'm gonna, so I unlocked the follow the teacher board. Would you guys so kindly go ahead and finish the assignment, please? So and then I'm gonna- not, uh, Sorry, do you wanna take a couple of seconds to answer a few questions? Absolutely, I would love to take a couple of questions right now. Mr. McGeech and Mr. Pawan, would you please stop your assignment? It will affect your grade if you're not following directions. <laughs> Thank you very much, I appreciate your time. Okay, uh, is there a quick way and an easy way to move from a student, one student to another student's board and join their boards? That's a fantastic question. Let me show you how to do that right now. So here you go, if you go over here, you go to the three dots, you see those three dots? Right? And so everything is preference, right? There's no right or wrong answer. Never a right or wrong answer. There's only what you like to do and what's good for your kids. Boom, right? Open class boards, go right there, right? Now I see James McEachin, Nano, and Puan Uberoy. I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. Now you can go ahead and if you have like 150 kids, I would alphabetize them. So I'll go ahead and alphabetize them. There you go. Now they're alphabetized. I go back. They should be in alphabetical order, which they are. Fantastic. Now you see this up here, page number one, right? You see? If you go to page number four, five, and you click on James McEachin, right? It'll take you right to page number five. Here's another way to do it. No wrong way, no right way to do it, right? So let me show you another way. You see this down here, on the lower left, let me highlight that for you. It looks like three lines. Some people call it the hot dog. Uh, I don't, I call it three lines because it doesn't look like a hot dog to me. So I'm gonna click that. You see this? This is a sidebar. Let me explain something real quick so that this took me another three hours to figure out, okay? So if you're in the sidebar, you're only in the read function only. What does that mean? That means that you cannot write on this board as much as you try. And as you see it, it says, please close sidebar from the bottom left. When the sidebar and the board is read only, right? And so me just trying to learn this stuff, I didn't even read that title. I just kept on working, got so frustrated. I didn't know what to do. So I called Pawan. So he helped me out. So the only way to close that is go back to this area right here and just click that right there. Just click that right there. <laughs> I gotta push, I gotta push okay first. I, and then you go right there 
and then it closes. Now you're back to annotating mode. All right, guys. So no wrong way, no right way to do it. You can just click on the slide that you want and it'll take you there. Does that answer your question? Next question, Sid. Uh, yes. So how did you write on a post-it note? How did you write on a post-it note? How about I do this instead of me talking all the time because sometimes I get tired of my own voice. Mr. Pawan, how did you write on a post-it note as a student? Um, so you just need to click. First, you put the post-it note there, then use the text tool, which is the second. Let, me highlight, the let me highlight that for you. Yes, and okay. then just click, uh, click that tool. Click the text tool? Yeah, yep. and, and then just hit the post-it note. So if you click on the post-it note, you can type on it. Does that answer your question or would you like me to clarify? I will, cla I will make sure that you know what you're doing. It's very important to me that you know and that I answer the question that you're asking. Okay, Mr. Sid? Um, yeah, so when a teacher showcases a student's board, is it supposed to showcase on the two teacher's screen as well? Yes, from what I understand, uh, yes. Am I correct? That's right. Yes. And now uh, you, you can, know, sorry, you can actually write on the showcase board, right? So if you are showcasing something, right? You can actually go up there and write on their board. If you're on a smart board, if you're on an interactive board, you can actually write on your computer with the annotating thing and say, draw circles around this, highlight things. I, uh, Mr. Um, Pawan, how many showcase boards can you show at a time? There's no limit. It just keeps becoming smaller and smaller. <laughs> so I think so you're oh, so what you're trying to tell me is that you can show like five or six yeah, and say, hey, look, look at this, look at this, look. Fantastic. I love it. Thank you, Mr. Puan. All right. Yeah. Could you demonstrate again how the showcase feature works and how can you showcase multiple students as well? Okay. So we only have two students to showcase. So that's as many as I can try to showcase today. Okay. So, but let me show you. So uh, before, I just want to iterate right now. I know that I'm in a student's board because I don't see all of their um, avatars, right? All their avatars aren't there. So what do I do? I um, have trained myself to always go back to the instructor board. No matter what I do, I always go back to an instructor board. Even if I know I'm in an instructor board, I click it again, right? So here, Mr. Pawan, right, has that. And I can come down here, right? And I see Mr. Pawan, right? And I see that showcase the work. So I'll go ahead and just showcase that work, right? And that's him right there. And then you know that you're showcasing his work because it says showcasing work. I'm gonna go with Mr. McEachin, right? Right over here, okay? I'm gonna showcase his work, right? And look at it. So you see one showcase and another showcase below. Does that make sense? Now, I just want to make you understand something here. It's very important that the goal here is not, because some children just don't like their work to be showcased, even though it is like so dynamic. I have a child in class that does such great work, but like doesn't, wants to be under the radar. But I secretly go over to her and whisper to her and say, hey, is it okay if I show you work? And then she gives me, and then that's how I know it's okay. <laughs> right? Fantastic, right? Does that answer the question? Yes? All right, next question. We'll take one uh, more and we'll move on. Uh, yeah, so actually there are quite a few. So if you could just accommodate a few more, it would be really good. I will accommodate so, anybody. Uh, it's totally uh, cool. Yeah, so the, the showcase, uh, when, you, when you were showcasing, you, you said it was anonymous, but the, they can still see the student's name on the shared Zoom window, right? So uh, how does that work? Do they Are they still able to see the student's name? I see Jim and I see Pawan shaking. Jim, can you answer that question or, or um, Mr. Go ahead, Jim. When, when, you, when you were showcasing the work, I didn't see anything on whiteboard chat. I mean, I'm in the Zoom, I can see who's in the Zoom, but I, there's no way for me to connect up someone in the Zoom as to the work being showcased. So as far as I can see from my, my board, I don't see any student identifiers to what's being showcased in front of me, even when he did the both of them. Mr. Pawan, can you speak on that and piggyback? Or do you want to say something more on that? That'd be great. 
No, I think that's exactly right what Jim said. But basically, when you're showcasing somebody's work, you don't want to share your screen, right, as a teacher, because you don't want to show the rest of the class that you're showcasing somebody's work. So you would not show your whiteboard chat screen on Zoom when you're showcasing somebody. Thank you very much, Mr. Jim, Mr. Wong. Mr. Sid, go ahead, ask more questions. I love questions. Can you showcase a student's work to another student and not the whole class? That's a great question. The answer would be no. Is there a reason why boards expire? Mr. Po I'm going to let Mr. Polwan take that one. You know why? Because he is the true, <laughs> he knows the right answer and I don't want to misspeak. Yeah, so um, this is a free tool, remember, and cloud storage costs us money and we don't want to have people create work and just leave it there forever. So that's why they expire. That said, there is a way if you go to manage book, non, if you go to the manage yes, book. Yes, I will go to manage book, yep. Not, not that one, uh, the one below, below you the- You got it. I'm a very bad student, Mr. Pawan. I apologize. <laughs> below the cloud icon, there's another- uh, This one right here? No. Nope. Ah, okay, see, I'm learning. So if you see, there's an export board option. So if you want to export it, you can, it'll export it and you can save it on your hard drive or your Google drive or wherever else for however long you want to. And just so, like I said before, there's no wrong way or no right way to do something. There's only a way that works for you. You can actually just go to, this is what I like to do. I like to go to manage boards. I like to, if you take a look at this clock spinning to the left, it says March 21st. Does everybody see that? Let me highlight that for you. So you see March 21st. Now I'm going to do this and it's not going to work. I know it for a fact, but I'm going to try it. You see how I went to March 24th now, right? So here's the beauty of whiteboard.chat, everybody. The beauty of whiteboard.chat is that if you do it to your lesson file, it updates all your students, right? So like if you have 40 students in that class, you don't have to go and click refresh, refresh, refresh. Because for me, if that was the point, I don't think I would be using whiteboard.chat. I go in, I click it once, it refreshes everything for about two weeks and they have it for another two weeks, you know? Fantastic, no wrong way, no right way. And Jim, Mr. McEachin actually gave me a great advice. He's like, do that non, but on top of that, download the board so that you have it forever, just like Mr. Paul Wong was saying. So I do both just for good practice, okay? Great, next question, Mr. Sid. Yeah, uh, where did you get the highlight tool from? Oh, the highlight tool. The highlight tool is an app that I bought on my own in the app store. It's called uh, Mouse something. Let me let me pull it up so that I get you the right answer because every question to me is important and I wanna make sure that I support everybody's questions. All right, here we go. So it is called Pro Mouse, right? You can find that on um, uh, the Apple Store. It's uh, $3.99 and it is worth every single penny. Now, let me tell you something. The reason why it's worth to me every single penny is because I teach kindergarten to sixth grade. And sometimes when I say, hey guys, go to the tab and the kindergarten kids are looking at me like, what the heck is a tab? right? Teach first grade. I tell them, click on the link. Mr. No, what the heck is a link? Now I use that. The best $3.99 I've ever had. I took it out of my piggy bank in the backyard and I bought it. That's it. Question. Next question. Well, um, could you show how you were able to put the student boards in an alphabetical order again? Oh yeah, sure. No problem at all. So if you take a look at these three dots, right? And I'm gonna just show you this very slow, right? That three dots right there, some people call it the snowman. Puan, what did you call it the other day? Kebab? Is that a yeah, kebab? That's a kebab. Yeah, it's a, and a kebab means something in, 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 in Pakistan. What, what native country was that? I'm sorry. Yes, that the person was in, the teacher was in Pakistan, but it's all over the Middle East. It's like the bits of meat stuck together with a skewer. Yep. <laughs> So you might hear it as a kebab. I know it as a snowman, but if you know where it is, it's okay. So here we go. 
you open the class board right there. And if you take a look down here, right? And it says make grid alphabetical order. Okay. And then all you do is click it. It's already in alphabetical order. Okay. And the, and, and, and that's how you do it. And that's how I do it just because it just saves me so much time. Right. I know where to look at that child's um, and you know, which child, you know, that is good and which child I need to focus on. And I don't want to go there, but everybody, every teacher knows that. Right. <laughs> All right. Next question, Mr. Sid. So now I think you should keep going. There's a few questions that you might cover as you uh, explain a few things. Too. Fantastic. Mr. Pawan, Mr. Sid, you got, I mean, Mr. Pawan and Mr. Sid, uh, you guys have been doing a fantastic job, but I would like to Mr. Pawan and Mr. McEachin to continue their assignment because I want to make sure that they learn how to set goals in their life. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the grade board. As you can see, whatever they're doing is going to be live. I hope. Okay, there you go. It is live. I know that Mr. McGeechin is on the same page as Mr. Pawan. They're typing away. Mr. Pawan is typing. And like, you know, it's kind of small and I'm getting old in my age. So, whoa, look at that. Mr. McGeechin is done. Let's take a look at uh, Mr. McGeechin's work right here. His goal is to get vaccinated before the end of the school year. That's a great goal. Just to let you know, I got my vaccination today. Everybody, everything is okay. <laughs> right? Now, I can join his board by clicking this button right here that says join. Right? And I'll just type something to him. Right? That is a great goal. Right? exclamation point i'm gonna go up here to this palette i'm gonna find maybe one of the coolest emojis i can find and maybe i'm gonna give him an emoji sticker boom now i can give stickers to anybody i want because i have a master's in giving stickers now here's the great thing right the great thing is that you can give all these stickers in the grid view you don't have to go from assignment to assignment to assignment. I can actually go into the grid view. And if Mr. Pawan was doing a great job, I give him something else. Maybe I might give him a Valentine sticker. Mr. Pawan, is that okay? If I can? <laughs> Just kidding. All right, here we go. A Valentine or maybe, oh, Chinese New Year's coming up. Is that right? Let me give you a Valentine sticker. So maybe you want to go and give your child a Valentine sticker, right? You just click on it, go over there, and there you go. Mr. Pawan has a Valentine sticker. You can give all the stickers you want on one board, 20, 25 stickers at one time, you know, and it empowers the kids. It makes the kids feel great. You know what I mean? And so, and it makes your job so much easier. You don't have to go to every single one, right? And so I'll just cancel that there. All right, now I want to show you something that's super dynamic right now, okay? I didn't show Mr. Pawan, Mr. Mukichin, or Mr. Sid this, so, but I'm gonna share it with you guys, okay? I'm gonna go back to my instructor board, right? So I know that I'm in my instructor board once again because I see all those folks, right? And once again, I can get to the last um, slide by going to that sidebar, I'm gonna click there. As you can see, I will take it there, right? And then I'll close it just because I know that if I don't close it, there will be no writing, no annotating. And so I hope this works. So they have just put something in, right? Called immersive reader. Now you might have students that don't know how to read. Kindergarten, first grade, you know? so. All you do is once you put in an immersive reader, right? I put it in already, but I will say read out loud. And then all I have to do is push play down here. Can you can you hear that or no? 
you know why I have my earbuds in? Take my earbuds out. You can't hear that because Mr. McEachin and Mr. Uh, let me see if this works here. Let's do that again. Let me go back here. I put in the immersive reader already. And I'm going to show you how to do that later, later on, if you want, after the, after the uh, whole webinar, right? I, I think that's such a cool tool, right? Uh, so I'm going to go down, pick read out loud. And then I'm going to go ahead and push play. Let's see where the volume's at. Ooh, volume. Oh, we're good. You're half finished the lesson and activities. Thank you. Please let me know if you have any questions by emailing me at nngo at npsdnj.org. And that's all I did, right? And I can show you that feature. And they just put that feature in. Mr. Sid, Mr. Poan, when did you guys put that feature in? Last weekend. Last weekend, right? Yeah. They are always looking to make this better for our kids, right? Always. And... One of the things that I do have to say before I go on to the next slide is that this is a, a teacher driven, right? It's a, a bottom up approach, not a top down approach, right? If you have something that you would like them to do, email them. If they can do it, they will, right? Bottom up, that's the way it should be in education. That's my personal feeling. I could be wrong, but you know, seeing this is successful. All right. Now, are there any more questions before we move on to our next part of the presentation? Mr. Uh, Sid. Yes. Uh, so there's a few general questions. Uh, can you upload PDFs on Google Slides or, or PowerPoint presentations as well? Yes. Um, let me do this. I know I'm looking at the time. It's 547. So if we can hold on to that question, I would love to share that with you at the end. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, whoever asked um, that question, stay at the end. I'll show you everything you want. Yep. There was a question also about how they can, you can create a group board. So if you could cover that later, that would be great. Absolutely. I should cover group boards as well. We just did group boards for a co-ed, um, uh, co-teaching uh, uh, class. And the principal walked in and she thought it was super dynamic, like so cool. Right. So I will show you that as well. Okay. So one of the teachers has a co-teacher and they would like to know if there's a way for both them to both collaborate and work on it. Yes. Another. Let me show you this real quick then, because this is a quick one. If you see here, I'm a teacher, right? I can actually make Mr. Pawan a teacher, right? I can actually even go ahead and make Mr. McGeechan a teacher. You can have any amount of teachers you want, right? Sometimes I might even make a student a teacher, but then I make sure that I undo that. Does that make sense for teaching purposes only, right? Does that answer that question? Great. Yep. Uh, could you show again uh, really quickly how the, the read aloud functionality can be accessed? Yeah, so let me show you read aloud, right? Real quick. All right, so I didn't do this. So here's what you're gonna do, right? Now, so from there, here's what you do. I'm gonna go here, right? I'm gonna go to the next section, right? Just so that we have something new, right? And then I'm going to type in just so quick. Hello. How are you? Thank you for coming today, period. Right? From there, right? You'll right click and it should say, let me see, read aloud, correct? Mr. Pawan? And then there's it. And then you could play. Hello, how are you? Thank you for coming today. Did that answer the question? I just want to make sure. Now, that does it in PDF. That does it in uh, Word. That does it in, um, there is a way to put docs in there. I can show you that. That's more of an advanced feature, right? Um, that can do it in, the only thing that it cannot do it in, right, is a screenshot. Am I correct, Mr. Juan? I don't want to misspeak and give. No, you can do it with a screenshot too. Now you can do it in the screen. Go ahead. Yeah. So. I think none. I think we have ten more minutes. I really want if we can continue, we can hold the questions for the later time because I think it will be super interesting to show how you introduce it to students because I saw some people asking questions about that. All right. So, um, 
I'm going to show you this right now, and I'm going to invite Mr. McEachin, and I'm going to invite Mr. Pawan, right? Mr. Pawan, you have that already, correct? So, I you're, you're, like, after this seminar, right, after this webinar, I'm going to give you all this information. You don't have to recreate this. I want you to have it, right, so that you can pass it on to your students, your teachers. So don't worry about it. We'll get your links. We'll make sure that you have all this information. Am I correct, Mr. Pawan and Mr. Sid? Is that our goal? Right. And as well as other things that I have created for you for coming today. Um, so, Mr. McGeechan, I'm going to go ahead and invite Mr. McGeechan. Remember, go to the invite side because you want to invite a child into your classroom. I'm not calling you a child, Mr. McGeechan, but that's what I have to use right now. I copy this link, right? Then I go to Google Classroom, right? And then I find my Google Classroom. And I go to my whiteboard.chat, right? I do classwork. This time I'm gonna create a material. And then what you guys can do later, right? Is ask me why a material and I'll, what, what is this? Uh, teaching students and teachers. While they are working on this, right, I'm going to explain what they're doing and why I do what I do. So you're understanding what my goal and my intentions are here, right? And then I'm just going to post it. Mr. McGeechan, you should have it. Mr. Pawan, do you have it as well? The link that I sent, emailed you before? Yeah, I do. I have it. Thank you. Great. Mr. McGeechan, are you in? And as you can see, I know that they're in right now, guys, right? I know. And so will you guys just start working on that, please, for me? And as you can see, as they're working on this, guys, I'm going to walk you through everything right now. Right? P Mr. Pawan has a question. You know that because, look, here his name is. I'm going to jump into his board right now. This is his board. That's a pretty good face, okay? And then I can say, how can I help? Question mark. He is live. What do I do after the smiley face? What a great question, Mr. Pawan. If you look down here, Mr. Pawan, can you see this down here? It says, below it says, after finishing the first slide, move on to the next slide. Next one by clicking the arrow on the lower left-hand side. So I'm trying to tell them to come down here. That's how you move on to the next slide. Great question, Mr. Pawan. I didn't even remember that. So you go ahead. Now, what are we in right now? We are in student-led because they are all working on their own. And let me show you the live version of this. There you go. I know that there are a couple of people in here that are working already, right? Mr. Pawan, you know, is there, right? I, I was just in his board. That's why I typed that and that's how I know, right? And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, you have college grid lines. You can add college grid lines to your sheet. You can add as many as you want. All right, I see Mr. McEachin. Mr. McEachin, can you stop for a second, please? I'm gonna go back to Mr. McEachin here. Mr. McEachin, were you able to listen to my uh, directions? Yes, great. But I'm gonna share with them what you heard, okay? Some students, right, are visual learners. Some students are audio learners right? Whiteboard.chat has created something for both types of students. As you can see, in order to play what I just recorded, and they can play it over and over again, all they have to do is go over to this finger and push play. Hello, everyone. My favorite food is steak. Please type in your favorite food. Okay, if they don't understand the first, if they didn't hear it again, they play it again. Hello, everyone. My favorite food is 
So now we have audio learners, we have visual learners, right? So go ahead, Mr. McEachin, thank you for stopping and sharing that with us. So I'm gonna go back to the grid view, which is down here. When you're in the grid view, you're looking at all the students, right? And seeing what they're doing. I'm always focused on the students that might be raising their hands. I'm focused on how they're answering the questions. Am I, what do I need to intervene? Um, can I give them some guided questions, some essential questions, some questions that will provoke uh, more thought? Can I give them, some students might be not as engaged, so I might give them harder questions to engage them and to get them to um, a level where they're really thinking at the next level. Right. And maybe for some students, they don't get that. And I might have to break that skill down from three skills to seven skills and celebrate the little skills. Right. So every child is getting personalized learning. All 25 at the same time, no matter where they're at, no matter where they're at, they feel safe, they feel protected and they feel supported. Holy moly guacamole. What kind of food is this? Mr. M Mr. Herboy, what is that? I love that. You know, what's that called? It's called chicken tikka masala. I don't know how to say, but I'll eat it. <laughs> awesome. Let's stop for a second, Mr. Uh, Sid. Are there any questions up there? Yes. Uh, how can we introduce this board with a scaled down version so that the little ones, uh, uh, younger students may, who may what? be overwhelmed oh. may have... Oh, oh what a great question. Learning. So fantastic. Who, is, who asked that question? Can I get a name on that question? Is that all right? Do, do, is that okay? Because I just want to give that person super, super props. No matter who you are, great, aunt, great question. Great question. I love it. You don't have to, you, you don't have to tell your name, but I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to go back to my instructor board. If I go to my gear icon right here, I can select C, very simple tools, draw, erase, and move text. That's what I start with my kindergarten kids. That's what I start with my kindergarten kids. Now I get into kindergarten first. My second and third grade, I go into simple tools right? Simple tools are just basically half of the tools that you see right here, right? Here's the thing that you got to remember. If you select this, you must, and I emphasize must save it, right? Make sure you, make sure you save that. So if I save that, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to save it, right? Mr. McGeechin, Mr. Urberwoy, look at your iPad. What does it look like? And if you don't see it, could you refresh that for me real quick? I, I see the simple tools. The simple tools. Would you be able to show that up against your screen by chance? So if you can see, they don't get all those tools, right? They get four tools to master. They get four tools to master. Once they master four tools, then they go on to the next step. Why? Because we don't, just like adults, you know what I mean? Um, we don't want to overwhelm the students. So what whiteboard.chat has done is thought that, hey, listen, this would be a great feature to put in for kindergarten, for pre-K, for first grade. And then they thought about that. Then they thought about the high school level too, right? My and favorite so, color is green. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm that's muted. okay, Ms. That's okay, Mr. McGeechan. We appreciate your favorite color is green. Now, if you go to the next slide, look at what's going on over here. I gave an example. Now, here's what I want them to do. I want, I didn't give instructions. I didn't give directions. I gave that in the last slide. So here's where they need to either recall, problem solve, or think back of how to move backwards. They're learning in so many different ways. If they forgot, I guide them. What can you do to find the answer of how to click play, right? And then I let them share with each other. You know, I let them teach each other, right? 
So then they say, hey, well, you know, Johnny, look, Mr. No put this up there already. Come on now. <laughs> right. So now you do that and then you do this. Right. And here's the powerful piece. Right. I'll click this. I'll click play. Hello, everyone. Go into the palette. Click on the palette. Use the alphabet feature, which is, I think, the sixth one down to see if you can write in your first name. Let me know if you have any questions. Now, you guys might be asking me why I did this on the last one. And the answer to you is the palette may be overwhelming to students because look at how many things they have. They have rewards, right? They have music. Like, they have so many things. I'm going to take you to another thing. Oh, this is another great feature right here that I wanted to show you. All right. One of the things that I really like in this feature, and I'm going to demonstrate this because I think it's very important, right? Is that you can go ahead and put a website in whiteboard.chat knowing that your child, your student will be on that website, not at another link, not taking you out to another link. So let me do this first. I'm going to go to kidshealth.org. I'm going to copy that link, right? I'll copy that link. I'll go back to whiteboard.chat, right? I'll go to this tools menu right here, tools icon, I apologize, feature. All right. And then I'll find this website. I, okay, feature right there that says website. I'll click on website. Now I have a plus, right? I do this. Then I paste the URL in there. And now, Instead of having a link, a kid's got to go back and forth and back and forth. They're working in the website already. Now, you might say it may be a little bit small for kids. Not a problem. What you'll go is go to this finger right here, right? On the lower bottom hand corner. You can just stretch it out like that. Move it up a little bit. Maybe stretch it out a little bit more. All right. Now, now, let me go over this real quick. You see this blue line right here? Let me restretch this real quick so that you can really see this blue line. Did uh, we go over Did we go yeah, over that already? Sorry, Nan. Maybe we should just um, end the recording, thank everybody, and then we can continue for people who want to stay back. All right. The last thing I really do want to say, guys, is that I'm super excited that you guys are here, number one, right? Number two, I just want to say thank you to Mr. McEachin, Mr. Sid, Mr. Pawan, Mr. Deval, he's not here right now. But last of all, I want to thank you guys for taking your time out to, to listen to us, to um, maybe give your child something in this in certain times where kids might not be able to learn as well if they're at home. And I do want you to reach out to me if you have any questions at all. And I feel like that's the same way across the board with any of these gentlemen, right? And um, I would love to help you guys, right? And just spread the word. So that's very genuine. That's very authentic from across the board from all these guys, right? So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and thank you for giving me an opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much, Jan, for doing this. I think we really appreciate it. This is our first ever teacher-led webinar. So thank you for stepping up and showing it from a teacher's perspective. If any of the People, I, some of, I see some of our pioneer teachers on the call as well. If any of you want to do it, please reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to uh, set it up so that you can present from your perspective as well. So I'm going to stop the recording, but we'll be here for 30 more minutes and keep talking if you want to.